Excuse me. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Hi, this is Melody Fletcher, author of DeliberateReceiving.com. This is a free audio recording. If you like it and you'd like to pass it on, go ahead, as long as no changes are made and no money is charged for it. For more free articles and recordings and to download a free ebook explaining how the law of attraction really works, please visit www.deliberatereceiving.com. How our thoughts affect our vibrations. Everything is energy. Everything we can see, hear, touch, taste and smell is made of different wavelengths vibrating at different frequencies. Our brain is like a translator that has the ability to interpret these frequencies into what we perceive to be our physical reality. So we interpret an energy cluster as a chair or a tree or another person. We perceive them as physical or solid, but break them down to their smallest particles and they're all just energy. There are non-physical energies as well, of course. Our thoughts, for example, are just different vibrations. Every time you think a thought, you send out that thought's specific vibration. If a thought makes you feel good, if it's a positive thought, it's vibrating at a higher frequency. If a thought makes you feel bad, if it's a negative thought, it's vibrating at a lower frequency. So, I hate you has a much lower frequency than I love you, for example. The more focus you give to a thought, the more thoughts of the same vibration will join it. This is the law of attraction in action. Like attracts like. As the vibration grows, it becomes stronger, more stable, more able to attract other, equal frequencies. The more attention you pay to a subject, the easier it becomes to think about it, and the more evidence you'll see in your world supporting your thoughts about it. If you think the world is a terrible place and spend a lot of time watching negative news, looking for horrible and sad stories in the paper and spending hours talking to others about how the world is going downhill, more stories supporting this world view will literally find you. Whenever you meet someone who thinks the world is a wonderful place, they're probably going to annoy you. The energy of their thoughts is completely foreign to you. The thoughts you think form a collective vibration. Some of your thoughts are more negative and some are more positive, but the majority of your thoughts are going to be in pretty much the same range. If you think predominantly positive thoughts, your overall vibration is going to be higher than if you think predominantly negative thoughts. And this collective vibration will affect what thoughts or vibrations you have access to. If you're a predominantly negative person, you'll have a very hard time thinking a cheery, sunshiny, happy puppy thought. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult. So, are we then merely a collection of our thoughts? Not really, no. Who we are is pure, positive energy. Our natural state is one of high vibration. So, if you have no thoughts, as in a state of meditation, you'll naturally return to that high frequency. Any thought which deviates from this high vibration, however, will have the effect of bringing your overall vibration down. The thing to remember, though, is that we have the ability to deliberately choose which thoughts we think. We don't have to be at the mercy of our thoughts, letting them determine our collective vibrations. We can change our energies at any time. There are many ways to raise your vibration, and you can work your way up the emotional scale one issue at a time. But the most important thing to remember is that you have the power to choose your thoughts and therefore you have the power to change your vibration and how you feel. Make a commitment to yourself today that you'll no longer put up with not feeling good, not being who you really are. Reclaim your power and deliberately choose to feel the way you were always meant to because you are supposed to feel good. It's your natural state. All you have to do is allow yourself to return to it. You're 
Hi, this is John Weir, board certified hypnotist, here with a great friend, Bob Bignell, and we're at sunny Orlando, Florida at Universal Studios at the backdrop of Dr. Seuss's wonderful world. What a beautiful place to show the power of thought and imagination. Now what we're about to show you is a demonstration on how energy follows thoughts and how your thought forms actually are creating energetic fields around you. Now Bob has a device here called an aura meter. And what the aura meter does is detects energy fields or the aura around yourself. Every single thought, whether you believe it or not, is actually creating a difference in your energy fields. And we're about to put on a demo to show how negative thoughts will shrink the field where positive thoughts expand it. Now you can see where the aura meter is right now. It is in a flat neutral position. As soon as it hits an energy field, you'll see the aura meter go up. And this is a way of detecting the energy fields around all people. So we're going to cut for now, and when you see us again, we'll be putting on a demonstration to prove the power of thought. Three. Hey John, this is Bob McNeil. I'm here with the Aura Meter. We're just showing the demonstration of this and the power of thoughts and your words. The first thing we're going to do is have Saban hold a neutral thought, and we'll see where her field comes out to. So if you observe, this will go up at the end of her field. So this is what would be a demonstration of a neutral thought. So as you can see that neutral thought in the energy field is probably about 10 feet away from Bob. So what we're going to do is we're going to show the difference now in the influence of negative thinking versus positive thinking. Okay, what we're doing here is we're going to have Savant pull a negative thought and you'll see how her field shrinks. The power of this is showing teenagers, kids, adults the power of their negative thoughts and how their field shrinks. So you can see we're in a neutral area right now. And the closer we get to Saban, the smaller the field is. She's focused on a negative thought. And now you can see we get this close and it goes up. So her field has shrunk right to here on holding a negative thought. This works for everybody 99% of the time. I'm about this close when somebody holds a negative thought. So even right there, that shrunk from about 10 feet away on a neutral field to about two feet. Absolutely. And people wonder about the nature of disease. And as you can see, as we hold on to negative thoughts, our energy turns inward on us and shrinks around rather than letting our positive energy reach out to greater distances. Absolutely. And you can see the difference in classrooms or in interactions with adults by holding positive thoughts and speaking positive words. It's a higher vibration and a larger field. Now here we are again, we're going to demonstrate the power of a positive thought in the energy field versus the negative. So Savant's holding on to a positive thought and look at the energy field now where Bob is. It's about 20 feet away, 30 feet away from where Savant is. So this is John Weir, Savan Dakarian, and Bob Bicknell demonstrating the power of our thoughts.